Hey, so here's a small overview of the system. Uh, just so you get the basic idea for now. That's what we have Raspberry Pi, um, Raspberry Pi 3, connected over serial. It's a single cable going through serial port, which I was able to activate properly, runs into telemetry port of PixHawk um, using three wires as a Double two signal wires, RX, DX, and then a ground wire. Uh, then we have a second telemetry established here. Uh, that's just for testing purposes before, so I'm gonna disconnect it right now at all. We don't need it. We have uh, that's a power module. We actually can power it up now. It powers through um, a servo rail down here. That's okay for testing, but of course my powder copter is gonna be properly powered all together. And I have a servo from my airplane times just over here to show you that we're even able to control uh, servos from uh, from the mission planner itself. Just set up here. And we're gonna power Pi simply by USB down here. Pi doesn't is not able to receive any kind of information uh, or connection through USB is just used for power. Um, so that's what I'm gonna have here. And it can nicely stack up like this if you want to have it nice and tidy. And so the most important part is on a computer. What we can do, um, let's start small and grow up. First on the local network, we are able to VNC in to SSH in and of course access uh, Mavlink protocol through local network. This is done by, um, let's start with SSH command. So you open your favorite, whatever you have. Um, let's zoom in, in in there and dark in it. Yeah, not a great job focusing. Okay, uh, it seems quite good. And I'm gonna readjust it again. Okay, I hope that's good enough. So to locally access it, uh, we will have Wi-Fi running on Pi. Uh, on the previous recording, I actually turned off Wi-Fi, so let's go first. That's how long it takes to log in. You can time it now. Open the website, use SSH, you log in the website, then you have a choice of, uh, that's what I have set up, SSH, VNC, and Mavlink. So you choose whichever you want, so we choose SSH, and then we press confirm. Now the website will give us information that we need to plug in into our PTT uh, software. So we copy the address, copy, paste, copy the port, copy, paste, open it. Confirm that you allow it and you log in as a Pi uh, and then password is Raspberry. Those are standard, so you might want to change it for security reasons. We're logged in, that's it. We're on Pi already through 4G connection. As you can see here, this blue, oh, you cannot see here, I'm sorry. There we go. The blue light here, that indicates it's the Pi is running over 4G and 4G is being used now. Um, to prove that further, actually I'm gonna start a VNC program, tight VNC. And I'm gonna request VNC login for my Pi from the website VNC, uh, VNC Pi here. I press it, I press confirm, and it gives me this link. I just have to co copy proxy50wave.com. I, I think that's what I. You can just copy the whole link here, and it gives you this. You just copy that proxy 50 wave.com and you paste it here that's it raspberry 
and now we have a desktop that's a virtual desktop of Raspberry Pi. You can see here Wi-Fi, turn on Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi is off. So we are indeed logged in by SSH and by VNC over 4G connection. Okay, so I'm gonna also prove you before we move on to local networks. I'm gonna show you how the mission planner is also able to get Mavlink, which is the most important part of the project at this point. Mavlink Pi, confirm. And we have our address and a port over here. We choose TCP connection and press connect. Now we place the uh, address here and we copy the port and we place the port. And we press OK. And in a second, oh, it's already connected. Now it's gonna download all the information from Pixhawk through Raspberry Pi over LTE down to our computer. The speed is as good as on uh, 433 MHz uh, 3DR, 3DR radio when it's right next to each other. So the speed is actually really good. There we go. That's That's it. We're connected, mission planner is connected. If you want to see a response, there you have the response. Whoop, whoop. Keep in mind that response on the screen is the takes double. So when we switch mode, you will see it switch here. Um, two times it will take two times longer to show up here than actually the quadrocopter will switch to that mode latency is it's very good uh, I get about uh, the same latency with the radio um, you could actually probably I can connect after and you can see it so there we go that's all over 4G connection and latency is great so now the actual latency test is with the servo because that's a one-way connection so when you move your controller that's how fast Pixhawk is going to respond so that's connected to servo number nine over there and all we have to do is low light oh, okay there servo nine you can see it right here I don't know if that's close enough okay there we go when I toggle it you can hear me press I'll do it loudly okay one two three you can measure on a video how long it takes between I click and between the server response It's momentarily one, two, three. Oh, wrong one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Oops. One, two, three. Response. Very quick. So there we go. Uh, we have action all working. It's all automatic. You don't need to uh, log in into Pi before um, being able to use Mission Planner. All you need to go uh, is to go to the website, copy the link, paste it, and you can log in. Uh, the only inconvenience is that you will have to go to the website. I don't think that's a big deal, um, but with, um, with the provider that gives us all closed ports with restricted network, that is the only solution out there. People usually give up before they find the solution for, for that problem, I mean. <laughs> so it is great and it works really well and the latency is super low. Actually, now we are going to, since we're SSH in, we can write, we can ping and see the latency with Google or some other website. Let's see, for instance, first we go in if config that gives us um, the overview of the 
network interface is connected. So we have Ethernet 0, that's normal port for Ethernet. Then we have Ethernet 1, that's what the mo modem emulates uh, and represents itself to the Pixhawk, oh, to the Raspberry Pi, sorry. At this point, we have the uh, Wi Fi is off. You can see here, if I turn it on, it will appear here. And Wi Fi is always second in, in the internet traffic communication. So uh, Ethernet is always the first one. Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1 have equal, uh, equal rights. So in internet will always go through Ethernet. And that's what this thing is represented as Ethernet. So we, all internet traffic, if this is connected, will go, will go through this. If you disconnect it, all internet will automatically go through Wi-Fi, which is extremely easy to use now. So we go ping and then da um, dash capital I, we go as one. This means ping interface Ethernet one, which is modem and type the address 8.8.8. .8 .8. Point eight, for example, of course, and it starts sending data. You can, you can see there. Yes, you can. Seventy five, eighty, eighty six, eighty five, seventy four, eighty five. It depends. In my house, uh, my phone gets only three G connection, so this is probably on a three G right now. I don't get four G in, inside my house. That's yeah. That's probably three G. There we go, that's probably good enough. Stop it. Uh, 33 packages transmitted, 33 received, so 100% transmission, zero packages lost, of course. Um, and the latency, 67 is the lowest, 82 is an average, and 100 is the highest um, standard deviation of 7.3. That's, uh, I, I consider that's a low latency, below 100. 100 is the highest latency we get, and that's pretty good, I think. That's it. Um, I guess that's all we have to show you. That's milestone one is completed at this stage. Success. <laughs> one thing I could show you as well is maybe milestone two. A little, little something from the future. <laughs> shall we call it okay spoiler alert that's the joystick pretty good for 15 euros <laughs> it's uh, second hand so that's why the price is so low three joysticks vibration um, vibration can be activated Mo uh, then number of buttons all of them are programmable also the button down here so you can use it for I don't know, emergency landing, whatever, the, up to your fantasy. I have that already fully done and my computer is fully set up for the joystick and Mission Planner is fully set up for the joystick already. So I will show you how easy it is to start up and start flying. All you have to do, open the Mission Planner, connect, which takes about uh, two minutes if you are doing it the first time. <laughs> And then plug in the joystick. Go to, if you cannot see it, I will readjust, darken it down. Okay, that should be better. Go to configuration, go to planner, joystick setup. And since mine is already set up, you just press enable. That's it. At this point, it's done. You can see mode switch over here. I have modes set up up here. That's stabilized and that's gonna be something else. Altitude hold. Let's go to a different mode. Position hold. That's auto, auto. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. And it goes one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Switching from auto takes a little bit longer for some reason. One, two, three. One, two, three. So what we see here is double latency. Actually, uh, Pixhawk received the signal in half of that time. One, two, three. Okay, you see it's, it's fast. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it takes. 
yeah, sometimes it takes a little longer. But, you know, most of the time it goes instant. Yeah. Up. Fast, fast. Longer. Longer. Fast. Fast. Longer. Longer. You can see the general response. It's quite adequate. Um, guess it depends on also on actual pix hack switching the mode. Um, we can arm it just like a normal RC controller. Armed. There we go. And we start flying and the response you can see it on the screen. Probably the total response was a feedback. One, two, three. I suppose that's about what point three hundred milliseconds about it. Uh, disarm works the same way. And then you can set up, you know, the modes here. Actually, what I have also kinda cool. I have those buttons to control the servo. That's down position, that's up position. There we go. You can see how fast it is. Oops. Momentarily, it free acts. Oops. Ah, it's already up. One, two, three. Right away. Well, I think that's a spoiler for today. And when you disconnect the joystick, it gives you a warning that joystick has been disconnected. So if you disconnect the joystick by mistake, it will tell you. It actually, you can make it an audible warning. So it will tell you that joystick was disconnected. Thumbs up.